Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to uh, Treading Dirt Southwest. My name is Justin, and today we're going to show you how to remove a CV axle off of a 2016 Tacoma. We're also going to show you how to reinstall it, and in addition to that, we're also going to be putting in an East Coast gear supply bushing to replace the driver's side needle bearing because, well, the needle bearing sucks. It's growling or vibrating or grinding, whatever you want to call it. It speeds below 40 miles an hour. When I engage four-wheel drive, it goes away immediately. So that's definitely the problem that I'm having. Real quick, as you can see, we're jacking up the truck here. We're leaning it towards the passenger side. This is to reduce fluid loss uh, out of the diff. Um, and just make sure, get your wheel off. I'm not going to show you how to do that. I assume you know how. Uh, the other thing I'm not going to show you how to do is remove the sway bar, my truck. The sway bar is already off of it for now. But it's pretty easy. You have these nuts here uh, holding on the end links. You remove those from either side, and then you have brackets under the skid plates. Remove those bolts. Comes right off. Just make sure not to drop your sway bar on your face or on your CV boots or something like that. When I do it myself, I use a bungee to hold one end up. Uh, it just helps. So be safe. All right, so your next step here is you got to take off this dust cover. I uh, tried a few different things, pry bar, etc. What really ended up working was a large flathead screwdriver. Tap it in there with the hammer, get it started, and then you just kind of work your way around uh, twisting and it should pop off. I'll show you that here now. And there it goes. So under the dust cover, as you can see, there is a cotter pin. You pull that out, and then you have this little uh, keeper nut, uh, this blue thing here that just slides right off. And uh, then you'll be able to get to your axle nut, uh, which is 35 millimeters. And that's on there pretty good. Um, it's about 172, 173 foot-pounds is the torque spec. So you're going to want to use a breaker bar uh, or your muscles. I used a breaker bar. And to keep things from turning while I'm cranking on the breaker bar, we uh, decided to put a lug nut back on one of the studs. We actually used two breaker bars, uh, one kind of against the ground uh, to keep it from turning, and it worked out really well. So as I finish taking the uh, axle nut off, um, just so you know, you're going to need a punch or a ball peen hammer, the rounded end or something like that against the axle. You're going to hit it pretty good with the hammer, um, but you just don't want to hit the flat face of the axle with like a large object because the threads come right up to the end. And if you mar those, you may not be able to get your axle nut back on. So as you can see, we're, we're using a punch here and that worked out well for us. All right, so your next step, uh, take a 19 millimeter socket and you will remove the two bolts on the underside of the lower ball joint attachment kit here. You don't actually have to remove any ball joints during this process. You're just gonna remove these two nuts here and that gives you the flexibility uh, in the next step to get the axle out of the uh, wheel here. Now, uh, some write-ups have you removing tie rods, etc. Didn't have to do that. Uh, had plenty of room to work, uh, did not remove tie rods or any other components. Uh, this is a 16 Tacoma. I thought it was the same with the second gens. Uh, your mileage may vary, but it worked out well for us. All right, now for the next uh, little bit, you're going to see us struggling here. Um, really, there's nothing technical about this or difficult. Uh, it, it's really just getting the right angle of everything here um, to get pull the axle through. Um, it, yeah, I just trying to get the right, right angle uh, first time doing this. So uh, it's a little bit of a learning curve here. Uh, but again, now that I've done it, very simple. Um, you do want to have maybe a jack stand or something available to um, hold up the rotor. Uh, that way you don't have to have a buddy hanging on to it and you're not um, stretching out your brake lines or anything like that. Also, as you can see, I'm laying some packing material here to protect the uh, CV boot. 
Um, this right here with the yellow arrow pointing to the C-clip, I have this here just to show you what you're pulling on because the next step we're going to yank the uh, CV axle out of the differential. That is all you're pulling against. Um, but uh, just people seem to struggle. Um, as you're going to see, I'm here, I'm using uh, various pry bars, things like that to try to, to leverage uh, to get that CV axle out of the differential. What ended up working though was a, that same large flathead screwdriver you saw earlier hitting it with a small sledge. There's ledges here if you look closely on the axle. And, and watch, as I hit it, it, it just starts coming free, uh, super easy. That's actually how we get it back in too. We just hit it uh, in the opposite direction. Uh, you can see the fluid starting to come out now. Uh, but honestly, uh, this worked out so quickly. Uh, I, I absolutely recommend uh, doing this or something very similar. So now the axle is free. Um, again, just be very careful of the axle boots. Uh, don't catch it on anything, don't rip it, um, and just lay it somewhere carefully. Obviously, make sure you have a, a drain pan available here. As you can see, it does drip out, even though we have the truck uh, jacked up and angled. Um, here's the tool that we're gonna use to uh, remove the needle bearing. The large piece of metal in the middle there is going to go on the outside of the diff. The small piece of metal is going to go between the spider gear and the needle bearing. And you'll see that you have to kind of put it into the differential at an angle. Here you can see the needle bearing, uh, the stock uh, bearing that we're going to be removing. Small piece of metal goes in there. Um, first step though, absolutely shove something in there against your spider gear. We're using some of that same packing material. Other people have used saran wrap. Um, that's just in case that uh, if you push that small metal plate in too far, that it doesn't slip and fall into your differential, which obviously would be bad news. So get something in there, pack it pretty tight. You'll remove it later, of course, don't forget. All right, so here's that small metal plate. We're gonna put it in. Uh, you gotta put it in at a pretty steep angle and then kind of swing it back around up against the, uh, the inside of the um, needle bearing. Uh, I'm using a telescoping magnet. Um, I'm sure you can think of something else if you don't have one laying around. Uh, it was pretty helpful. Uh, it, but it really does just take some finesse. You, you got to get it in there and then swing it in, but the tolerances are tight. So you got to get it just perfect. Um, and I'll show you that in a second uh, where we get it right so you can see what it looks like. All right, so now it's in. Um, we're gonna kind of pan in here and you'll be able to see uh, what it looks like. You'll see the hole um, that you're gonna thread the bolt in that you saw in the earlier photo right there. And as you can see, it's just right up against the inside of that needle bearing. All right, now we're gonna thread the uh, bolt in. You can see the large metal piece goes on the outside here. And then you're gonna crank one of the nuts down. It comes with two nuts in case you need to double nut it. Um, I didn't have to. And just so you know, when you start cranking on it, you really shouldn't have to put a whole lot of pressure. If you do, which we did uh, the first time here, the first go around, um, take the tool apart, get that small metal plate on the inside realigned and try again. If it's pulling straight out, it actually should be really easy to, to yank that, that uh, needle bearing out. So as you, as you can see, we're just using an adjustable wrench here. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure on it here. Um, and it just kind of breaks free. Also guys, as I, as I keep uh, cranking on this, the axle seal is just right on the inside here. And you can replace that if you want. This is a brand new truck. This tool really doesn't damage the seal at all. So I'm gonna leave it in. Um, I'm not gonna change it right now. I do have a, an axle seal laying around. Um, but obviously at, at this point, once you get your needle bearing out um, and you get the bushing installed, you can replace the axle seal if you want. And I know a lot of people recommend doing it while you're in there. But again, truck is new. I'm not gonna worry about it.
and it's out. There's your needle bearing. Surprise, it's been grinding for a few thousand miles, but uh, it still looks still looks good. All right, so here's the East Coast Gear Supply bushing. Um, we're using a, a socket to, to drive it in, just find one that fits real real snugly. You have a, a kind of a, a bushing end, and then you have a, a flat end, and you're gonna drive it in with the flat end facing out so you don't damage the inner uh, bushing material. I'm adding some assembly lube uh, just to hopefully make things slide in a little easier and uh, we'll show you that in a second here. Alright, so make sure uh, the bushing is aligned and, and I always start kind of tapping just to, to feel things out um, and then you, you can start hitting it harder. Um, kind of got it misaligned a few times because I'm a, I'm a moron um, trying to run the camera and uh, pound this in at the same time but we got it going here and as you can see it, it's it's going in pretty smoothly you're gonna you're gonna drive it in until it is just uh, flush with the metal ring on the inside uh, you'll see it in there you don't want to push it too far in this bushing is longer than the original needle bearing which means it can contact your spider gear uh, if you drive it in too far so again, flush with the metal ring on the inside here. We'll show it in a second as, as best we can, um, but it's, it's pretty simple. All right, let's zoom in here and you'll see that it's driven in just flush with that metal ring and perfect. So now we're going to reinstall the axle and uh, first step is to get it into the uh, differential. As you can see if you look closely here I'm just hitting it with that flood head screwdriver. We got the, the splines lined up into the, into the diff. I gave it a few test hits. Uh, it started to go in so then I just started whacking it uh, real good and it, it popped right back into place. Um, and then here we're gonna we're gonna wrestle it back uh, into the wheel. Again, nothing too fancy. Just got to get the angle angles right and line up splines, and uh, it it should go in pretty easily. All right, and the next step is we're gonna put those two bolts back into the lower ball joint attachment kit, the 19 millimeter, and uh, I would add some Loctite. Uh, oh, perfect amount, look at that, just perfect. Anyways, you're gonna put those back in, Loctite them. Um, torque specs call for 118 foot-pounds, so you gotta get those in really good. They're important, obviously. Uh, don't skimp on this, use a torque wrench, use Loctite. All right, um, and then really we're going to put the axle nut back on. Um, that goes on at 172 or 173 foot-pounds. I don't have a torque wrench that goes that high, unfortunately, um, so I just got it gooten tight with a breaker bar. And as you can see, we had the, the lug nut back on one of the studs, just like when we took it off. We're doing this as well when we tighten it so that we're not just turning things. And got it on there nice and tight. All right, put the uh, keeper nut on there, the cap on there. Reinsert the uh, cotter pin, um, use pliers or something to kind of bend it like it was before so it doesn't slip out. And then you're going to uh, tap the dust cover back on, give it a couple of good wax and it should go back on. All right, guys, so that's the end of the video. The truck is running smooth, no more grinding. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up, comment below, keep it social. I'd love to hear from you. And if you could, subscribe. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff coming up. Thanks again.